going on everybody out there? This is Popular Stranger and we are back at you again today with another Madden 24 Ultimate Team video. In today's video we're going to be going over the brand new competitive pass which is live right now and features a free 97 and 98 overall card. Let's jump right on into it and cover this content. Now we did also today get early reveals for Ultimate Legends and Part 2 of the Combine promo which are both going to be dropping tomorrow. I'm going to cover those in a separate video because there's a lot of information to go over with those and a lot with this comp pass so I don't want to put it all in one long video. Comp pass is a big W this time around, but I'm going to talk about the one bad thing about it first. If you read the description, it says take on the competition in head-to-head -head and solo battles, complete objectives and earn competitive points to level up and earn packs, coins, season XP, and exclusive players. Unfortunately, there's not actually any season XP in this field pass. So that's an L. And I believe there's one or two or maybe both of these are the reasons why maybe EA did this. Number one is that we have so many other promos on the way. We got Combine right now. We got Team of the Year on the way. Sugar Rush, which is the Easter promo. Ring of Honor. Free Agency is upcoming. The NFL Draft. So there could be the potential that we're getting so many promos that are going to have field passes that give season XP that they just didn't put it in this one for that reason. The other thing, and honestly, I think this is the truth, is that a lot of offline players have complained all year about having to play through the competitive pass to earn season XP. And if we're being honest with ourselves here, they have catered this competitive pass to offline players a lot. They've, throughout the months and months, and, you know, this this the, since the launch of this game, they've reduced certain numbers of things you need to do online. They've basically made it easier to complete this pass. So, so I don't know if they did it for that purpose. They never really mentioned why they made this change on GMM this morning. The good news is that everything else about this pass is really, really good, including the exclusive player. So I'm going to show you the entire list of rewards that are in this field pass, and then we'll go through a couple of them. But you're probably going to notice there's a free 97 overall Justin Jefferson in this competitive pass, and also a free 98 overall Zaven Collins. We're going to cover the attributes on these cards. We're going to go over the discounted abilities. We'll talk about those in uh, more in a moment. The other thing that I noticed, and I could be wrong here, but it seems like there's a lot more coin rewards. Now remember, when the new season field pass went live, the old comp pass was still active and they changed all of those XP rewards to coins. I'm also wondering if like this was supposed to be 20k XP and they never flipped it back, so now it's 20k coins. I, I don't know. That's just a guess. I actually totaled it all up and if you max out this field pass completely. There's 385,000 coins in here. That's a lot. I didn't go back and look at the prior field passes, the prior competitive passes, but I feel pretty confident in saying that's a lot more coin in this field pass compared to the others. So another thing they could have easily done is, is purposely substitute XP out of this pass for coins. And when you think about it, you can't spend XP. You can spend coins, which means you can upgrade your player. Don't spend those coins on packs, by the way. And a lot of you call the season five field pass trash if we're being honest here why do you care so much about season xp in this comp pass if the season five field pass is so trash i'm just playing devil's advocate here i would love to see this many coins and a little bit of XP in here, but it's kind of starting to make sense as to why maybe they did that. Let's talk about the exclusive player. So this is a huge name, by the way. Don't be overly concerned about the pack art here. This is a 97 overall Justin Jefferson. We will show you when we get over the catalog. Um, this is a huge name. This is a guy that they could easily put into packs right now, and he could be an LTD, and people would rip packs and spend money and spend coins. Instead, they put a really big name into a free reward, and there's only been a few really good competitive pass cards this year. This is a really good card and it actually feels like it's worth going after. Now, how long is it going to take to unlock this one? I'm not quite sure. We'll kind of have to, you know, we're going to go through the objectives and show you in a moment on how to earn the XP, but it's not going to be right away. People aren't going to have it this weekend. They probably won't even have it next week. It's probably going to take two to three weeks at level 21. And remember level, I think 17 or no, it was 27. Level 27 in prior passes originally featured a full legend player. Then they nerfed it down to two legend packs. I was really concerned that they would keep legend packs in the competitive pass this time around. They didn't. They actually substituted it out for ultimate legend packs. So that's a W. If you remember comp passes last year, even like several months into the ultimate legend program, it was still giving regular legend packs. So it's good to see that they stayed up to, stayed up to date with this. 
Also, at level, what is it, I think 26, this is a pretty good reward as well. A 96 overall BND Weekly Wildcard Fantasy Pack. Normally, we get, like, in the last comp pass, right? We got, like, 91s and 92s. At least these rewards feel somewhat up-to-date with the current state of cards. By the time people unlock this, we'll definitely be at 97s and 98s, potentially closer to 98s and 99s. But this is still a good reward, and it feels a little bit more current with the state of Mutt rather than being so far behind in the prior competitive passes. Again, you can scroll through all of these rewards here. I'm just kind of pointing out the good ones. The second feature player reward is Zaven Collins. Really good looking card. I'm going to show you the attributes in a moment, but he's six foot four. He's obviously tall. He's fast. He gets good abilities. He's a hybrid player. He can rush the pass or stop the run and be a user uh, and play pass coverage. And if you fully max out the pass at the end of it, I would have loved to see a full ultimate legend here because level 42 is going to take a while to get to. Uh, instead, you get three ultimate legend packs, but it's still a little bit of a step up. In the last comp pass, you still got your two regular legend packs. At least they're adding in one extra. Again, I would have preferred maybe a full legend, but this, this is good. I think this comp pass is easily the best comp pass we've seen all year and it's a step in the right direction. We should get at least one more before the end of Madden 24. Hopefully it's as good and hopefully they continue to do this in Madden 25 and beyond because the comp pass, it's a little bit sweaty. It's a little bit stressful to get through and earn these rewards. They should be good rewards, right? At the end of the day, we're not just out here only playing solo challenges to get a lot of this stuff. So how do you earn XP to get all of these free rewards? You're going to knock out a objective so do your dailies because these are really important they don't give as much xp as they did two or three months ago but they're still really important i believe these are going to reset every day at 10 30 a.m now it has been 9 30 but i think they maybe corrected the timer don't quote me on that one but make sure you get these done every day mutt champs is always going to be the most profitable way to earn xp in the competitive pass i get this question all the time head-to-head -head seasons are mutt champs seasons are better for coins and mutt champs is going to be better for xp in the comp pass now, Mutt Champs might get a little bit more sweaty because the rewards are actually good in here, so you might be running into more goons than you normally do, but as you can see here, knocking out statistical objectives and, you know, winning Mutt games is going to give you a lot of XP. Literally winning five games is going to give you 90 XP. I think most of you, if you're the least competitive player watching this video, can still figure out how to win five games out of a total of 25 every week. On my No Money Spent account and my main account, I usually shoot for 10 to 15. If you can get 10 wins per week and mutt champs out of the 25 games that you're allowed you're going to stay at a pretty good pace you're not going to be the first to unlock a lot of this stuff but you're going to be at a pretty good pace to get a lot of the, these rewards uh you can play through your solo battles i know me personally i hate playing through solo battles but these are the things that you can do to earn xp and as i said a moment ago mutt champs is way better from an xp standpoint head-to-head -head seasons you can see you barely get any xp by playing head-to-head -head seasons is really good though for coins because you get packs for winning Super Bowls, you get coins for making the playoffs, so you're rewarded in that sense, but if you're strictly grinding for the competitive pass rewards, you're going to want to stick to Mutt Champs, and usually about halfway through the comp pass, we'll get a new set of milestone objectives. Everything else I just showed you, these three, they all reset every Friday at about 10, 30, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. The milestones do not reset, but we should get a new group of these likely about halfway through the pass here and if you're going to be playing through solo battles make sure you're playing on veteran difficulty so you can get these xp rewards here and right now this is everything that you're going to do to earn xp to get all of the free rewards in this competitive pass let's talk about these exclusive player rewards now you have to remember that there's a limited version of the card and then a non-limited version so if you're in the top 1000 people per console so i think like xbox is one group of people Xbox on current gen, PS5 on current gen, obviously, and then old Xbox, old PlayStation, so PS4 and the old Xbox, I think those are also a separate count, and then the uh, PC community is a separate count, so I think there's like five different groups of the top thousand people if you're on old gen or pc these cards are not going to go very quick but if you're on next gen systems xbox or ps5 they go a lot quicker um they get a discounted ability and you get both an auctionable version and a non-auctionable version but even if you're not in the top thousand these cards get really really good ability so if you're in the top thousand for justin jefferson and by the way attributes 98 stock speed the route running is fine 95 96 97 96 catching 
this is an amazing free reward. This is an end game wide receiver that you can get for free simply by gr grinding through that competitive pass. And he gets really good abilities outside of being in the top 1000. So if you're in the top thousand, here are the, the discounted or extra abilities you would get. You get either Deep Elite for 0 AP or Short Elite for 0 AP. I haven't really tested these abilities out. I don't know how good they are, but I don't feel like they're completely necessary for a card with these attributes. Now, if you're not in the top 1,000, again, you're just going to get a BND version of this card, which is fine because I think this card's going to last the entire or the rest of the year. More cards will come out that are better, but you could get by with this card. These are the abilities you get if you're not in the top 1,000. If you are, you get them as well, but if you're not, you still get grab and go for one third down threat for zero wide receiver apprentice for one or route technician for one i probably won't use any of these abilities i mean probably third down threat because it's zero ap if you're not using a hot route master quarterback you might want wide receiver apprentice route tech has been okay this year but it doesn't seem as good as it's been in prior years but those are the abilities and you get them in a second bucket so hypothetically you could go route tech and third down threat for one ap you could go route tech and wide receiver apprentice for two ap you get access to two of those four discounted abilities the same thing is going to go for zabin collins which i remember he had a campus hero card last year very early on in the year that was a really glitchy user and if you take a look at this one this is like a new isaiah simmons and spoiler alert we're getting a new isaiah simmons tomorrow for part two of the combine promo but if you take a look at this card run stopper archetype but he's got 97 speed 98 tackle 95 block shed 97 power move 98 finesse move he's basically built like a run stopper slash pass rusher but he's also six foot four, and if you go to his defensive attributes, he has 93 zone and 95 man. This is an amazing card, and it's all for free. Now, with the abilities, because he's a linebacker, you're absolutely going to want Lurk Artists on this card. If you get into the top 1,000, just like Justin Jefferson, you're going to get access to a couple uh, extra abilities. Inside Shade for zero is definitely a W. This is one you might want to try to go after if you're able to. Edge Threat Elite, Edge Threat and Edge Threat Elite stink this year, and I think this guy is going to be better used as a stand-up linebacker to use her and blitz at the quarterback. So using Edge Threat Elite would just be, it would be stupid in my opinion, but to get inside shade for zero AP is huge. Now, if you're not in the top thousand, unfortunately, you're not going to get that ability, but you still get some really, really good options as far as abilities go. Again, because he's a linebacker, you're going to want to put Lurk Artist on him, but he does get it for zero AP, so you get that. And then in the second to last bucket, you get the same options. You can get mid zone KO for one, secure tackler for one, or deep in zone KO for one. I think secure tackler is huge because you're going to see a lot of these X Factor running backs. We got Bo Jackson out right now, the AKR Marshawn Lynch. I'm pretty confident we're going to end up getting another Gus Bus card or another Quad Father or rehashes of last year's AKA cards. Tackle Supreme, Secure Tackler are going to be the best abilities to neutralize that. Hopefully you see more players with zero AP on those abilities, but he will get this for one. I personally would probably go Lurk Artist and Mid Zone KO because he's probably going to be playing the middle of the field whenever I earn the card. But again, this is a W of a card. I just have zero complaints. They finally gave us a really good competitive pass. So for now, to go level it up, to try to earn all of these rewards, you're not going to be able to get them all today or even this week or next week, but go start grinding Mutt Champs right away. Make sure you're doing your dailies. And then in the off time, I would knock out solo battles here and there. Again, if you're an offline player, you're going to do the reverse of that. But that's going to be the best way to level this up the fastest way possible and try to get those top thousand cards. But even if you don't, the BND versions of both of them are really good attributes, really good physical attributes, and really good abilities, and abilities kind of run the game right now. So that is the competitive pass. Go grind it. Go get after those free rewards. We'll be back with another episode very soon. Not an episode, but another video very, very soon. Uh, going over everything that's coming out tomorrow. It's been a great week of mutt, and this is certainly part of it. Thank you for watching. My name is Popular Stranger. I'm out.